Yo, what up? Welcome to Made by Ozzy. I'm Ozzy. And on this channel, we're turning a DE0CV FPGA kit into a cryptocurrency miner and an FPGA. Except today, in this episode, we're actually going to have a, uh, um, uh, just, we're going to talk for a little bit about the different types of memory available on an FPGA. Uh, but first, check out my new, uh, my new digs here. I actually just got a sick new desk, so I'm, I'm actually pretty excited. This is a much better setup for me for the videos and... Uh, I'd actually put off getting a new desk, you know, because I've been working from home since March because of COVID, right? Uh, and I, I've just been working at the dining table. My wife's been, you know, begging me to get out, you know, away from it. So I finally got myself a nice new desk and I got a big one so I could do this whole YouTube thing. And yeah, anyway, FPGA memory. Okay, so uh, the most common one you I'm sure you've heard of is RAM, right? Every computer has some RAM and FPGAs are no different. We have some RAM we can work with. Um, the chip itself has some RAM built into it and um, in a sec I'll walk you guys through figuring out how you can figure out how much RAM you have and how do you actually use it. I'm just going to show you how to set it up because uh, I'm actually not going to use it. The whole point of this video is to describe what type of memory I want to use and why we're going to design it this way and uh, kind of getting into the direction of the channel and where we're going to go. Um, so RAM. Uh, the chip itself has some built-in RAM and we could use a little IP, um, we, we could have a built-in module that Cordis provides to us um, to use that built-in RAM. Um, also, the development kit we're using, the DE0-CV, has another SD RAM chip on it. So it's an external chip to the FPGA, a whole separate chip, and they wired up all the bus lines for us to actually have this external RAM. Um, so I'll walk you guys through sort of a little bit about what uh, both those are, um, set, a, set up a demo for it. Um, but uh, the, the main point that I'm trying to get at is how, how we design our buffer to accept this, the, the, the UART communication, the RS-32 communication, um, is it, it, heavily defined by what we're going to do with that data. So... Um, and, and, you know, we want to do two things, right? I've been saying that the whole time this channel, and we're actually getting up to a point where we're going to start doing those things. Uh, but uh, the first one is crypto mining, right? And the second one is graphics. For crypto mining, I already told you guys, we only need 640 bits of data from the PC software, or little Python project that we got. Um, you can always go check out the GitHub, you know, to, to get up to speed with all the source code that we have so far. Um, but uh, we only need 640 bits for the crypto mining. So that, that's, that's really small. That's a really small and manageable amount of data. Um, and, and I actually am going to build a, a buffer module in Verilog that uses only registers. I'm not going to use RAM at all. Um, I'm making this video to talk about RAM. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, maybe people watching this video are a little bit new to Verilog or a little bit new to uh, um, FPGA programming in general. And I want to show you guys that RAM is nothing to be intimidated by. Um, you could take, you know, if you've been watching the, the videos up to this point, then, then you have a, a, a worthwhile skill set. You, I mean, hopefully you're getting a little bit more comfortable with what you can and can't do in Verilog. Um, and if you want to use RAM, it's not a huge leap to just take everything what we've learned so far and use it, um, as long as I show you the first step, right? Uh, which is easy. We'll walk you through that. Um, the reason I'm not going to use RAM is because RAM inherently works by loading uh, data into address spaces. Um, and it, it makes it easy, right? Because you, you save up like this humongous amount of data and then you can access whatever you want by just uh, calling a specific address. For crypto, for crypto specifically, we, we don't need to be picking parts from data anywhere. What we're going to have is a very long uh, buffer, well, a 640-bit array, right? And, and that's we're going to move that through this pipeline, which is going to be the hashing algorithm, which we developed for the FPGA. Um, there's nothing random about it, and RAM stands for Random Access Memory. The memory that or the information that we're going to receive for crypto is completely fixed. We're going to take what we receive and run it right through the pipeline. If I were to use RAM as an intermediary, I would have to build another module to load it all into the 640 bit bus afterwards anyway. Um, so I'm just not going to do that. Um, so that leads into direction for the channel, right? Uh, I'm just saying I want to do something. I want to build a buffer for crypto. Okay, then what about graphics, right? So, I, I admittedly, I'm actually very eager. I want to get us to a point 
uh, where we actually are working with crypto because crypto is by far way easier than graphics. Graphics is this whole Pandora's box and it's going to take us, uh, and I'm probably going to be doing this for like, I don't know, a long time getting the graphics working. The crypto, on the other hand, um, we could actually finish and have something totally working and just like, I don't know, a few more videos. Um, that's a few more weeks. Like it's, uh, it's, a, it's a much more manageable, a much smaller project. I really want to get this whole video series to the point where I, I, I've actually worked through the entire process of creating, you know, a Bitcoin miner and a Digibyte miner on this uh, Cyclone 5 chip because um, we're close. So that being said, I'm going to gear the development from here on out specifically for crypto mining um once that is at a point where we actually have something solid basically i want to have a whole we're going to start with sha 256 i want to have a whole bitcoin miner basically working on that fpga um and then we're going to circle back and start adding stuff for our graphics side of the project so because there's a lot more hardware necessary for the graphics than what we currently have we're actually at a point where this FPGA almost has all of the necessary peripheral hardware to support crypto mining. Um, but there's a lot more that we need for the FPGA, or for the for video, I mean. So we're going to need to program in the VGA. So we need a VGA controller, right? Um, we're going to need to program in the SD RAM 100%. We're going to need as much RAM as possible for graphics. Um, what we have available is, is not enough, really, for a really good graphics engine, but... It's what we have. We're going to get it working and we're going to do what we can do with it, right? Um, so so that's two things, right? We have the VGA and then we have the, uh, the RAM, um, you know, communication that we need to get working. Um, those are two big things, actually. And then after that, it actually gets into uh, the development of, you know, um, of cores to process vertex uh, vertex shaders and fragment shaders. So we're actually going to develop, like, the, like, the, like the, the, the processor, which takes the shaders that the programmer would define in OpenGL and actually execute them to populate, you know, at the end of the day, you want an RGB value for every pixel. So, I mean, that's, you know, how we get from what the C++ code is doing to the pixels is going to be a, the video stuff is going to come after the crypto. Um, so we're going to design the R32 buffer module with, res with respect to crypto. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm going to use registers, but for the sake of being, I'm going to, show you guys how to um, work with ram in the cyclone 5 and specifically our chip um and then also what would be involved to get the sd ram working so um i'm just going to go ahead and jump into that right now okay so to figure out how much on chip ram we have we actually need to uh um check out the device overview provided by intel for you know uh, for our chip and so i got this here for you and don't worry i, I added it to the repo so uh, it's all in the repo if you uh, sync the GitHub, you'll have access to this document here as well. Um, okay, so and in, in here you could actually see uh, there's a little like uh, part numbering chart. So we could use this to decipher, um, you know, what specific stats our chip has. Um, so we are using, this is the um, DE0CV uh, manual. We're using uh, this part number here for a chip 5CEBA4F23C7N. So the 5C means it's a Cyclone 5E. Um, or oh, I'm sorry, it's a Cyclone 5 here. The E stands for whatever this is, right? Doesn't look like there's another option, but 5CE, right? Uh, the B here is a no hard PCIe controller, which uh, um, uh, would be dope. I would like to have one of those one day. Uh, the A here is for error A4. Yeah, A4. Uh, 49K logic elements. So that directly dictates sort of like how much uh, computing power we have to work with on this particular chip. So we have an A4. We have um, not the bottom of the barrel, but you know, um, you know, 50K versus the top of the line has 300K. So uh, that's something. Um, and then F23 here, uh, F package type and uh, number of pins, just mounting information for if you're designing the PCB. And then temperature specs, um, the speed grade here. Notice we got a, we have a seven, right? Seven N. Um, so again, not the best, but not the worst. Uh, seems to be a trend here. Um, and then another packaging uh, option. Okay, so we have an A4. Um, so that means we just go down this table here. You know, 49 logic, 49k logic elements, just like it says right there. Uh, and this much memory to work with. Um, we have 3,000 um, kilobits of m10k memory and 303 kilobits of mlab memory um, and these are two different types of uh, um, how memory is distributed within the fabric of the fpga itself 
um, uh, when we actually create the IP to use RAM in the FPGA, uh, we could choose, we could have it auto select this for us, which is what I'm definitely going to do. Um, okay. So let's take a look at if we were to make that. Um, so here I have the Cordis project open court in the copper. And if we wanted to actually make some RAM for us to use in a project like this, we have to now use this, uh, um, we haven't used this menu yet so far on the channel. Um, this is uh, a bunch of um, uh, modules basically that Verilog will provide to their end users. And so you know, you got some arithmetic like uh, uh, this Cordic is actually an algorithm for calculating trig functions, sine and cosine. Uh, yeah, sine and cosine. Uh, absolute value, add, subtract. Alt FP means Altera floating point. So this is an add, subtract for a floating point type. You know, so there's a lot of stuff you could do here. But what we want specifically is on chip memory. Um, and, you know, so you got some options, right? RAM, one or two ports. ROM, one or two ports. Um, we're going to make a RAM one port for now. Um, and so we need to tell it, we want it in Verilog. That's, uh, I mean, I'm not going to look at the text that this generates, but I, I want it in Verilog if I ever want to. Um, and I want it in this folder. That's uh, my repo for FPGA. Sure, that looks fine. Uh, specify a variation file name. Okay. Uh, demo RAM. Okay. Okay, so what are the defaults here? How wide should the Q output bus be? This is how much data you're getting at a time. So, um, you know, it could be eight and all the way up to 256, how wide your bus can be. Um, and so um, eight is pretty common because that's what a byte is, right? That's a, that's eight bits long. Um, if you wanted to be, you could do something like 32. If you wanted to get a whole floating point number all at once, um, uh, you could do all 256, which I don't know, maybe would, wouldn't be a bad idea for uh, crypto because you're working with uh, 256 bit outputs from your hash function. But I'm going to leave it the default 8 bits because this is just a demo, right? And then how many 8 bit words of memory? Um, this basically dictates how much of the RAM you're going to take up. Uh, so, you know, we have uh, a certain number of kilobits available to us, right? Uh, this many, 3,000. So we have 3 million uh, bits to use. And this will take up 256 times eight, whatever that is, 256 times eight. So this will take up 2000 bits out of the 3 million we have to use. And so, you know, you can see how it scales, right? Like we have a finite amount. What should the memory block type be? Um, I don't know. I'm gonna let it auto select that for us. Uh, I believe it has something to do with whether you have um, a very small array and you wanna sample it a lot or whether you have a whole bunch of data that you're gonna have to sample from bits and pieces of. Um, I don't know. Uh, we'll leave it for auto for now. And then what clocking method would you like to use? Single or dual? Uh, you could really push the limits of how fast you're talking to RAM by using dual clock, but we'll just leave it default single clock here. Okay. Um, which ports should be registered? So you'd have an option for data and write enable. That's what ren means. Um, and uh, uh, you also don't have an option for address. You need to uh, specify which address. Oh, I should also mention um, the the reason this goes by two is look two fifty six five twelve because um, it, it dictates how wide your address line is going to be. So for eight bits, you have uh, um, you know two hundred fifty six possible total addresses. So you know if you wanted five twelve, you would need nine bits for your address. Same here with the Q output. You know uh, it would dictate the width of the bus here. Um, Okay, um, and then I'm going to leave all these as just their default. Well, no need to really worry about that. Now, what should the Q output be when reading from a memory location being written to? Um, so that's, uh, we're going to select don't care for this one here. Um, actually, again, it doesn't matter. This is just a demo, right? So what's the difference here? New, di new data means uh, um, whenever, if you have this like write enable pin in the correct state so that you're writing new data to the RAM, because you know, if you, I think if you have this like off, write enable, yeah, write enable, if you have this false, then probably you're just reading, right? If you, doesn't matter what's on your data line, you're just writing the address line and reading some value from it. And then you probably set write enable to high in order for the data line to be written into whatever is at the address. Um, and then, so this, this option here is while, uh, being written to while I guess right enable will be high. Uh, do I want this data to be, you know, what it used to be before it started being overwritten, what it currently is, or do I not care? Um, good, in good practice, you should build in 
your own synchronization method so you don't have to care um but whatever i don't i don't care about either of this i'm not going to use this block so finish okay so by default it's going to make the verilog file of course uh, that's the actually how it works right and we also want this uh, bsf file because you know we're working with the uh, uh, schematic diagram so we need a bsf to actually use it so okay now it's created now in order to use it in my project i would actually have to come in here and select it and drop it in and I could do that right there and, and look, you know, there it is. There's my RAM block. I have some RAM. I could, uh, you know, set up my clock to it. That's my normal 50 megahertz clock. Um, and then I have to set up something to keep track of uh, um, a data, uh, an address that I want to read and write to. And then the data that I will either read or, well, that I'll write, that I'll only write. That's the only time this will be useful, right? And then the output here, if I'm going to read it. Um, easy. Really nothing to it. All right, and uh, the E0CV has a um, SD RAM chip on board as well. So this is a, a chip external to the FPGA, but on the same board. And, you know, they, they wired up all of these uh, signals for, you know, us to uh, um, kind of interface with that from the FPGA. And that provides us a whole other 64 megabits. Um, don't be confused or don't be thrown off by this capital B, which normally means bytes. They do indeed mean bits here, um, which is, you know, a whole lot more than the three megabits we have on board. So, I mean, it's still, I mean, it's not like a whole ton, right? But it's definitely a, um, a lot more than uh, what we have on board. Uh, so it, it, it's a similar concept. You know, you have an address line, you have a data line. Um, this BA is another address line. You have some more control signals for, you know, when to read and write data using the clock. And then to use that, we'd have to go through the exercise of actually adding all these pins to our... Um, uh, QSF file and so you know we'll do that in the future but you know, definitely we'll need this sort of this much memory for um, graphics but for crypto we don't need it um, so yeah okay cool right so RAM nothing too scary right uh, SD RAM nothing too scary we've done all this stuff before on this channel not we're we just going to add some pins for the SD RAM uh, I already showed you how to make the Verilog mod or how to make the module for for in chip on chip RAM um, it's all good. So let me know what you guys think about this type of video. We didn't do any Verilog coding, right? We didn't actually advance the project forward. I just wanted to really explain explain what the motivation was, what where, where all these design uh, design decisions are coming from. Um, so let me know what you think about it. Leave a comment down below. Do you like it? Do you hate it? You know, like, uh, let me know. Hit like, hit subscribe. Helps me grow the channel. Thank you so much if you hit like, hit subscribe. Um, hey, uh, if, you know what? If you've been watching these videos, if you've been keeping up to, to, to this point so far, you know, you, you're kind of smart and you should feel proud about that. All right. I hope I see you next time. Take care.